got I've got it prepared already. So hopefully it's just a case of me. Um, I, I think hide presentation should hide the slides. I think Julia might have shared them in case you wanted to look. Oh, they will be shared at some point. Okay. Um, I'll minimize minimize the slides. Um, I'm going to try and share my screen now. So let's have a look. Um, okay. So can people see my screen? I'll assume you can, as if, if no one says. Oh, okay. Someone said yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, maybe it's best to just assume that you can, um, unless anyone speaks up and says no. Um, uh, I might just turn my camera off because otherwise I'm going to be looking from screen to screen. Um, but I'll I'll turn it back on again at the end. Um, okay, so let's begin our lab tutorial. Um, so if you're following along. Um, I'll assume basically I've obviously I've, I've opened my virtual machine already, but let's just assume um, you're on your virtual machine. Open up a terminal if you haven't already. Um, and I've actually I've moved directory from the home directory. So let me just show you where I am. Um, so I think you'll I think this is uh, where you'll end up if you open the terminal. So change into the input output directory um, and into CF training. Um, so this is actually from a GitHub repository we've got where we've got this full course, which is a long day course that we hold. We've also got a short course that I've designed um, for um, tutorials such as this one. We've only got, um, say, a, a, a session of, in this case, 45 minutes. Um, now, actually, there is a startup script, but the startup script here uh, actually will open the notebook that starts the full course. So in this case, I want to actually um, open a notebook in here. So I'm actually going to run some of these commands manually. So I'll, I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Let me just, I'm just opening the start, um, the script, just so I know what environment to get. I'm also going to run that command there, but I'm going to specify a different notebook. That's all it is. So first of all, activate your environment. Um, Con to activate virtual env. Oh, I think mine was already activated actually, but yes, do do that uh, yourself. Um, and then there's this command, which um, if you're not sure what to do, essentially the main bit is, is opening Jupyter Notebook, um, which you can do without an argument, but let's do it with an argument because we know exactly what um, notebook we want to do. Uh, but if you're copying this now, you can copy, actually there's the startup script there. You can copy the command from there and just change this final argument, which shows the notebook we're opening, because we're actually going to open this one on the short course. So if you're following along, that's the one we're going to go for. Um, let's wait maybe 10 seconds so people can open the right notebook if they're, they're following along. These uh, these arguments, I'm not sure are strictly necessary, but. Um, um, OK, let's try that. But I'm just thinking I could copy that into the. Um, chat let me do that that's what i'm running that makes it easier for everyone um, okay so it should be opening the notebook here previously i've zoomed in so for me it'll be more zoomed in than than for um than for what you're seeing it might the, the text might be smaller um so i was just zooming in by the browser maybe, maybe it's not the best way but um it's good enough and i think that should be the text should be readable there. If if someone's struggling to read um, anything, just just shout in the chat and I'll um, increase the the text size. But uh, mostly we're looking at this. Obviously, there's some um, blocks with um, descriptions here, but mostly we're looking at this code and the text is a bit larger there anyway. Okay, so this should be um, I guess 40 minutes now. 40 minutes of lab tutorial. Um, Again, sorry, the schedule was slightly different to to that promised by Julian. Again, completely my fault. Um, so this we've kind of discussed in uh, the lecture, so I'm not really going to go over because this is more if you were using this notebook standalone because we are providing this training. It's in a, an open GitHub repository, so you could do you could um, 
follow along with this at any time. You you know do this training in your own time. But this is basically just talking about what we were talking about in the in, in the lecture that um, the that we're focusing on these three tools: CFDM, CF Python, CF Plot. Uh, yeah, one thing I will quickly say from that text though is um, this summary obviously focuses on on those tools um, for use with NetCDF, uh, which has been the focus of of these talks this afternoon. Um, but I should say that CFDM, CF Python can also uh, recognize and and work with other file formats. So the CDL, which I mentioned before, which is kind of a descriptive form um, way of describing NetCDF, but also PP and FF, uh, these MetOffice um, file formats for say UM fields files, I think is is full name for FF. Um, so there is more that these tools can do, but we're going to focus on NetCDF certainly. And so in in forty five minutes, there's too much to um, far too much in, to, that these tools can do to describe in in that time. So I'm going to focus on I, I've kind of picked out four um, little exercises here that we're going to go over that can demonstrate quite a lot of what the tools can do without um, without getting bogged down in, in detail or um, 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 I guess going to too much depth. Um, but please, if you're interested, look at the documentation and there is the full course as well if you want to do more training in your own time. Um, okay, so I'll, I guess I'll cover these um, as we go through them. Um, but basically, we'll start by just reading in some NetCDF, creating this field construct object, as, I, um, as I've been discussing in the lecture, modifying some of the data and metadata, then writing it back out to NetCDF. Um, then we're going to do some basic data analysis and some plotting. Uh, we're going to do some regridding um, again with some plotting to show off uh, CF plot and what I can do. And the, um, we'll work with the groups. If you remember that um, the hierarchical groups of um, the enhanced data model show a bit about how you can work with those with CF Python. Um, excellent. Right. So let's begin. Um, so this first cell is just basic um, configuration of our notebook. It's going to hide some warnings because sometimes you can get some warnings from matplotlib. Um, just thinking you won't see. I think I added that line in before, just trying to get a bigger figure. So just ignore that. You might not see that in your notebook. Um, OK, so that's just some some setup. If you're not familiar, these percentage um, markers. I'm not sure, I can't, I'm not sure the, the formal name for that marker, but um, that just uh, runs a kind of a special command in a notebook that provides uh, some uh, some utility. Um, similarly, this this exclamation mark will basically run a command in uh, your current working directory rather than um, running a cell in Python for our, our kernel here. Um, so this is just going to run a command basically to show that. And um, if I just minimise, I'll just quickly show. Oh, maybe I can show up here. I did an LS just to see what's in, in the directory here. We've got this NCAS data. We've got lots of data. So we've got basically got different um, NetCDF data sets in there. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you. I think <laughs> I made a mistake here in that I don't know where my notebook has gone now. It's not very helpful. Um, There we go. OK, got it. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. OK, so this command will show, you, show us what's in that directory, that NCAS data directory. As you can see, we've got um, the well, first one's PP, which is this MetOffice Met format I had uh, mentioned before. But most of these are NetCDF, as you can tell by the, net, the .nc file format um, extension. So there's plenty of data to play with. Uh, we'll be looking at a few of these, but obviously there's too many to cover in 45 minutes, really. Um, but if you're exploring this on your own, um, in your own time, then there's plenty to look at there. Provide a few already. Of course, you'll probably have your own data sets um, or, or know where to get them from. But OK, so a few more commands. I'm just going to run this tool called NC dump. I just want to show you basically that um, we've got some classic data model, NetCDF3. We've also got some enhanced data model, NetCDF4 uh, in those data sets. So this is just running an NC dump command to tell us minus K option tells us the type. So taking two of those data sets, for example. 
So as you can see there, it's told us the first one, data one.nc, that's netcdf4, second one is classic. So there is, um, yeah, the different data models incorporated into our data sets there. Okay, so the starting point uh, usually for, for analysis, import the libraries you want. Um, so quite self-explanatory with CFDM. In terms of CF Python, the name is CF Python, but the library name in Python is CF. Um, so if you try and import CF Python, I think you can't have modules with hyphens in them anyway, um, dashes in them anyway, but CF is the thing to import. CF plot, um, I guess self-explanatory, although we do tend to use CFP as an alias, so that's what I'm going to do here. So let's just import those libraries. All right, so on to our first kind of mini exercise. We're going to read in some NetCDF, um, do a bit of modification of it, and then write it out again to a new NetCDF data set. Um, so the key method here is read. Um, so cf.read. Uh, this is the argument here. We're just giving as a string the path from where we are to uh, one of the state sets. We're picking this one um, just as an example. Um, and you assign that to, to some variable, which will um, encapsulate the object for the read in data set. Um, OK, so obviously that worked, but we want to really inspect what we've got. And CF Python provides lots of different ways you can inspect uh, field constructs and, and various different constructs at different levels of detail. Um, so first, let's take. Um, um, well, we'll take the, the first item here. If there's guaranteed to be guaranteed to be a first um, field, there may be more than one field from a Redden data set. Uh, or field construct, I should say. We tend to we tend to say field when we mean field construct, just for short. Um, so I might I might slip into that terminology. I'll try and be try and be. Um, I'll try and use the full name. Um, so this is taking the first field, um, and if you just um, call it a sent, well not call it, but if you um, run it as such, you will get um, minimal level inspection. So you can learn about the field with minimal detail. Um, so as you can see, it's a CF field object. And you can see um, the variables here um, that are incorporated. Uh, I should point out at this point, actually, Eastern Winds, that's our first example of a standard name. Um, at atmosphere hybrid height coordinate is also a standard name. So these are those standardized names in the CF conventions. Um, so that's an un unambiguously telling us what, what um, is incorporated there. Uh, now, if you want more detail, if you want to see um, what the field um, incorporates, you know more about that because this is only a very brief summary. You can use print. So before we were getting, I think that's the repra, and this is the essentially giving us the. Oh, no, I think that might be the string interpretation. This is the repra, one or the other. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. But in Python, this is asking us. This is a slightly different uh, representation of the object. As you can see, it's got more detail. So now we can see not only those um, uh, what the data is representing, um, but also these different metadata constructs from our data model. So dimension coordinates here, um, for example, and the data arrays are kind of summarized here. So for example, for time, there's only one element, so you, that information can be put in full. But say for the latitude, you can see there's 145 um, elements in that um in that data array so obviously it's not going to print all of them here it's just doing a summary by showing you the first and the last and their dates degrees north finally if you want maximal detail you can there's a dump method so let me just show you this see there's so much detail that my pot lib uh, sorry not my pot lib uh, the notebooks um create a little scroll box but all of these inspection um means of providing the same they're showing the same field they're just showing a different view on it in this case the view with as much detail as you you might want so um you can also see um attributes of the whole uh data set for example here this is a key one conventions this is actually telling us that this data set is compliant with cf at version 1.6 uh which is a slightly old version so one point it's, we're currently on 1.8 1.9 is due to be released but uh that's still that's still pretty up to date i think 
um, various attributes, and then again, more detail on um, these items. So if we map between the two, this uh, the print shows us dimension coordinates here in some detail, whereas with dump, with the dump method, it's showing you, say, what this line is for time. You're actually getting all this. You're seeing all of the um, um, information there that is encoded as as for the for the metadata. Um, of course, you can also inspect the data itself rather than the, the metadata, um, as I'll show you um, shortly. Okay, so let's think about the data in itself. Um, and you can do basic operations, or what you do more complicated operations. But let's show, let's uh, look at an example of a basic operation. Um, so, say to square the data in, incorporate in as a um, an our data array. Just use um, um, just this uh, multiplication operator. Um, so this will take the square, and let's just inspect to see what we've got and what the differences are. Um, so the first case, we printed just the the field as it was, and the data using this dot data. Uh, so we take that, that attribute, you can get the um, the data array. It is condensed a bit, but there are methods you can use to see the full array. Um, it actually boils down to kind of NumPy. Um, attributes and inspection methods at that point because underlying is um, a numpy un array um, encapsulates the, the the data um, but as you can see with the square field um, the data has been squared not the easiest to I don't know what the square obviously the roughly the square of that but obviously it's between between 16 and 25 isn't it between four and five squared lose the negatives that is that is that squared and then um, so this is in in my lecture. I was trying to um, kind of indicate that having metadata can streamline your analysis. And this is an example here because um, the units before were um, meters per per second, uh, but because we squared our, our data, um, because the metadata has that unit, it, it, we know that when we square it, the units are going to change. They're going to be squared, and therefore we get this. The unit automatically changes. We didn't ask it to; it just it, it knew it had to do that um, logically. And we get this GY, which um, I don't know much about that unit, but I know it's the um, um, it's equivalent to a meter squared per second, well, a, a meter squared for um, um, per second minus two. I'm trying to think the best way to say that. Um, but if you see what I mean, it's that unit squared. Um, and there's also the units attribute, uh, which I can show you. We'll show the units separately. For example, um, equally, there's lots of different um, attributes where you can find various different information. So if you want to find the standard name. Oh, yeah, sorry, this is this is meant to fail. Um, um, for the field itself, we had eastern wind, as you might have noticed on the inspection back uh, back there. but um, Again, in terms of the metadata streaming, the data analysis, um, the standard name, as you can see, because we've got this error for the squared field is actually gone. Field has no standard name property. And that's not um, an error, that's that's deliberate. That's um, CF compliant um, um, result, because when you're squaring your data, um, you're, you're changing the nature of it. Um, and it's not going to be the same data that you've described with your standard name because it's now squared um, as, as, as kind of demonstrated by the fact the units change. So um, CF Python knows or CFDM knows basically when you're, you're doing that your your um, this standard name no longer applies and therefore it removes it. Of course you can reassign it to a, something that's now sensible again but um, it knows that that isn't applicable anymore. And say if you didn't use a, a kind of a metadata aware library, it might just leave, say, might just leave that name in. But actually, that's not appropriate anymore. So your metadata gets would get left behind uh, relative to the data. Whereas using a metadata aware library, it's all keeping um, it's all keeping in sync and consistent. 
Um, so let's just assign a new appropriate standard name. I think I got this one actually from the table of standard names. This is another um, CF compliant official standard name. Um, and now let's run that again and it won't fail this time. But you'll see before um, it was Eastern Wind and now we've, we've assigned this standard name of square of Eastern Wind for the attribute, um, which is a name that describes unambiguously what it is. Um, okay, so we've changed that in the sense we've changed um, the data and some metadata in the form of changing the standard name. Let's actually write out our new field construct um, to a new data, a new NetCDF data set. I'm going to call it squared e wind. So I'll just run the right operation. And yeah, let's just see what we've got now in our current working directory. Remember, this exclamation is just um, so you can run a shell command in your notebook. It's quite useful. Um, yes, so before we didn't have this, but now we've got that. And in fact, just to prove that it's um, written out the roughly the right thing, I mean, uh, certainly the right thing, but equally um, not rigorous proof this is right, but equally just to get a feel for it. Um, let's use the NC dump uh, facility. This H will just give us the header information only option. Uh, it just basically means an option that will not print out all of the data, um, which obviously will be a lot of information. So let's just see that that's done what we hoped it would by using a separate tool. You can obviously inspect again using CF Python, but I want to just kind of show in a um, another kind of verified tool that this is correct so that um, in case you're suspicious it's not right, or, or for example. Um, so you can now see um, this is actually CDL. It kind of um, summarizes the net CDF in, in a kind of um, plain text format. It's looking for the right bit. Um, we're looking for, I guess, is our standard name, which changed. <laughs> when I was practicing this, it was easy to find. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, you see the standard name now is square of Eastern wind. Um, as, as we changed um, before and yeah, like I say, I've, I've used the manage H option, so we're not actually seeing the data, but um, the data will be squared because um, we manipulated that. All right, so that's our first like mini exercise. Um, quickly move on, um, just conscious of time to do um, this time. Let's kind of do a similar thing, but in terms of our manipulations, let's um, do some. Um, um, let's change the data in a more interesting way. So this time we'll read a different file um, and we're going to immediately take the first field construct that it finds. Um, so actually you can, I could remove that and show you what you get, what, basically a field list, a list of field constructs. Um, and then show you what the, the, the um, first element is just out of interest. So when you read in a file, um, purely it actually is a list of fields so it's not just um here we've only got one but it might be there might be multiple ones um which is why we're just taking the first element um you see because we've done the print we've actually done kind of medium inspection but you can also just again do that and get a, a more concise view as you get in the field list um so this is what we're working with now um you've got your basic information um you see this is eastern wind actually this might be the same now this is a different data set but it's also eastern wind Oh, maybe I should have done something a bit more diverse. But, um, anyway. Um, so yeah, let's do a statistical collapse. So basically we've got um, the uh, data and in terms of the domain, um, you can see we're in a single point in time, in time but um, we've got various um, coordinates, pressure, latitude and longitude. And often when you're doing your data analysis, you, um, um, you've got a lot of different um, mentions. You want to kind of um, reduce the data in some way, which means you can say plot it or um, analyze it um, in a reduced form. In this case, let's do something um, like taking a, um, a representative value, um, in this case, as an example, a maximum um, across an axis 
uh, an axis, sorry, and let's choose uh, the time axis as an axis. So T in this case is just um, a shorthand in, in CF Python CFDM for the time axis um, and coordinates. Let's run that. This is basically going to. Uh, oh, I've just noticed a question come in. It's a very good question, actually. Thank you. Um, so currently, CF Python doesn't support. Um, sorry, I should, I should say the question. So, so Abel has asked, does CF Python support arrays other than NumPy arrays such as Dask arrays? Um, Currently, it doesn't, but actually, we are in the process for the next version of CF Python of converting um, some of our under the hood, um, basically the, the the underlying working of CF Python to to Dask from another um, uh, memory management scheme and parallelization scheme. So, for the next version of CF Python, which is going to be 4.00, um, it will um, all arrays will be. Um, Dask arrays, which could be easily converted to NumPy arrays and vice vice versa. Um, you know, it's a very good question. Um, uh, I guess there's nothing to say you can't. Basically, when you get when you ask CF Python to give you the data object um, of, of the field construct, um, then it could just it just boils down to a NumPy array. So then you can obviously use other tools if you wanted to um, um, that might be able to convert that array to a different type of array. So if you import a Dask. Um, you could Daskify your, uh, you know, you could say convert this NumPy array to a Dask array using Dask, but it, certainly in, in CF Python um, itself, it's just going to be a pure pure NumPy array. But that's not to say you can't use other tools to convert it to a to a Dask array. Um, so yeah, thanks for that question. Um, um, yes, yeah, so in this case, we're going to um, do a collapse, which is our name for reducing. Um, the data along along this axis, so we should get a representative value, the maximum for just this time time axis. Let's see what we get. Again, the operation works, but obviously you want better to see what actually happened. Um, oh, that doesn't look right. Why does that not look right? I think possibly because the time. Yeah, OK, let's just take a little break here because I've done something that's not right. Probably by amending that cell before, I probably shouldn't have touched it. Um... Yeah, I'm just wondering why the first one has. Um... Oh, there we go. OK, it's because I haven't read the cells in the right order. That's it. Let's uh, ignore me. OK, so let's all make sure we're running the cells in the right order. Otherwise, it's just it was trying to collapse. Time was already collapsed. I think I must have accidentally run the, the collapse first. Um, so you see here, there's, there's, there's 300, well, nearly 400 um, um, time points represented in the, in the coordinates. Um, as you can see here on a on more detailed inspection, um, you get the same. Now, when we do the collapse and print what we get, you can see the time, there's only now one time point represented. Um, so it's done the collapse we asked, but it's taken the maximum. So this is now the one time point. Um, and we compare that to the data here where there were 400 values. Obviously, it's truncated. We're only getting to see the first and last one. but um, it's actually taken the um, the maximum value to where the data was maximum. Um, at what at what time point the data was maximum, which turns out to be in 1995 on on that time. Um, so that's a collapse, and you, there's there's numerous different operations you can do um, collapse over, so to speak, and any set of axes you would like or multiple axes. Which I don't think we have time to cover today, but actually in our full course, in our full training, there's plenty of examples of that. Um, let's do a subspace now. So uh, we're taking the X, which I think in this case will be longitude um, and uh, oh no, latitude actually. Yes, of course. Um, so we're going to take this value, the, the 30 value. Um, we're going to say, okay, let's ignore the um, 
point at latitude of zero. Um, just look at the um, point of latitude 30 degrees north and see what um, how the data is um, um, what the data is like when we do that. So let's take the subspace with the subspace method. Um, oh, again, I just seem to have. I think I'm again not putting the cells in the right order. So let me just. I'm just looking at. Doesn't look right. Doesn't look like it's changed. Oh, of course, I'm printing the wrong thing. Sorry. So if you just in your notebooks, if you're following along, I was printing the old one. Now I want to actually print the new one, which is called V sub. So let's see. Um, oh, so first of all, it was collapsing over the long longitude, not the, the latitude, as I thought originally. So somewhere in this data, there's a point that's 30, and we're we're um, taking that one. We're saying, um, okay, I want to focus. I want to subspace so that we're already considering that that longitude. And as you can see now, we've only got one longitude relative to having 48 different longitude points before, and it is that 30 degrees. Um, and of course, with each of these um, operations, the data um, will change to reflect that, of course. Um, um, now, let's I haven't shown any of um, CF plot yet, so let's, let's do that. Um, I've actually you won't see this in your notebook if you're following along. I try to add this in because actually the figures that emerge are very small for some reason in this notebook. Um, I was trying to get them bigger and I, I'm not sure what it is, whether it's something to do with the notebook or CF plot. So I'm sorry, they are quite small when you run this. Um, or they should, well, unless you, I say, got a more up to date notebook that's, that solves this um, somehow. But um, yeah, so let's plot our subspaced um, uh, field construct. Let's see what that looks like. And yes, we get, <laughs> we get our small plot. Uh, maybe I'll open this in a tab just so we can see it a bit larger. Oh, it looks like maybe it's small because it's very wide. I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, so uh, in actual CF plot, it works very well, certainly if you're using it as a script um, when what kind of notebook um, matplotlib settings on maps causing issue. Um, um, but you see here we've got so um, a contour plot over eastward, eastward wind, which is our standard name for what the data represents, and then latitude by uh, pressure in this case, because we've only got the one longitude value and that's uh, the, that uh, was 30, um, you see here. So next let's do the same, but actually instead of looking at the 30, uh, longitude of 30, let's um, take a subspace at zero. Um, so we're doing essentially the, uh, kind of the same operation, but on, on looking at a different data point. Um, so I'm doing this all in one. I'm plotting the result overall instead of assigning it to variable, just to show you quickly. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so I'll not open this up larger. As you can see, there's these subspaces are resulted obviously in different data naturally. Um, so you can tell the the pattern is slightly different there. So in that way, you can. Uh, oh, sorry. I've just yeah. I've just I'm trying to monitor the comments as as I go. See, so someone said, uh, Fabio, if you double click on the figure, it gets bigger. That's uh, oh, that's excellent um, because. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. That's great. I did not know that. I had not noticed that at all because I presented from this notebook before. <laughs> um, thank you. Yes, that's that's really good. I don't know why it's so wide, but um, there needs to be some sort of element in the corner that may be making it wide. Um, but yes, yeah, so as you can see, in fact, if I make that smaller again, because that's Quite, it's quite easy to compare the two when they're smaller. Um, you can see it's the, the data is, is different now, as you can tell from the plot, which is the, the subspace of, of the overall data set. OK, let's do another collapse. Um, um, so before we did maximum over the time axis, let's do mean. Uh, let's do a mean now. I'll run that while I just reply to comment. Um, 
Um, so Elliot has asked, hello, can we use this library to plot some small animated gifts? Uh, GIFs, sorry. Um, so currently, I believe CF plot can't do say GIFs. I know Matplot. So, so CF plot builds upon Matplotlib, and I know Matplotlib can do um, animations. So it might be that you can work with because CF plot exposes the um, underlying Matplotlib object. So it might be actually that you can use that to create a GIF by working with the the, the Matplotlib object, but um, in terms of built-in functionality for CF plot, I am fairly sure it doesn't support animations yet. Although I will note that actually to the creator of Matplot, uh, sorry, of CF plot. Um, uh, just let me write that down actually, yeah, because it, I think that would be a good feature to have. Um, okay, just write that down. Um, Um, feature. Sorry, I'm just I'm trying to reply to the questions at the same time. Um, so thank you for, for, for asking those questions. They're good. Um, okay, so I've run the collapse. Let's see what it looks like. This is a mean instead of the maximum because last time we were um, essentially taking over the longitude axis. Um, a representative value that was the mean. So I'm just scrolling upwards to see. Just to see what's happened here. Oh no, that's correct. Okay, yes. So it's you see it's collapsed down the longitude of the x axis uh, axis to um, that one value that is the mean. So that's the mean there of the longitude. Sorry, not of the longitude of the data. Uh, that's the, the the longitude point where the, the data is a mean. Um, just to be clear. Um, Uh, so another question from Laura, uh, or another question, this one from Laura. Um, does CF take into account that grid boxes might not have the same size when averaging? Uh, in other words, would it do a weighted mean automatically? Ah, that's a very good question. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I'm thinking if I look at our documentation, it will tell us. So I'm just going to get that open now because there's a table and it's quite uh, it's quite clear, um, in my opinion. But, um, Need to look it up. So uh, analysis. So in our documentation, we cover the um, these various different say collapses and operations you might want to do. And somewhere here there is a nice table. Um, oh, this is the one I'm thinking of. Yes. So um, to set a weighted mean or normal mean. So in this table, you see we've got different one. We tried a maximum before. You can also do say a mean. Um, so I think for the mean, the unweighted mean here, the weighted mean. Um, ah, okay. So it doesn't say in this table, but I think it depends on so the weighting would be, um, yes, the cells, essentially, these grid boxes. Um, so I think by default, it will weight across, um, across those. It should say somewhere in the documentation here. Um, but basically, if you did want to wait, uh, wait it, or if you didn't, uh, you'd be able to specify um, either way. Um, so I'm sorry, I can't immediately tell which is the default, but um, we provide that flexibility. Um, all right, thanks. Um, yeah, let me just try and work out how big of a time, I think. Yeah, I've not got that much time left, I suspect. So let me notebook back up. Um, go okay um so yeah so finally for this um um mini exercise let's take another subspace so you can subspace over a specific say time so before we were taking a subspace um based on um oh before actually we were doing a similar thing before based on a specific point yes but um in this case let's take a subspace over time just out of interest and plot that uh, using yeah the great trick from Fabio where you can actually actually see the plot in in full size. I did not know about that. Um, but yeah, that's just another example. Uh, and you can configure this plot in in very different ways as you wish. Uh, but I I don't really have time to do that because I'm trying to show quite a lot of different functionality. Um, I might show a bit of it in this in this next exercise actually. But um, 
That's just the default plot it gives you. You can then go on to customize as you wish. Um, okay, so for the um, yeah, for this next section, we're going to do some regridding or um, interpolation, as you might know it. Um, so I'm going to get going with that quickly because I think the time probably running out. So let's do this quite quickly. Um, so again, we're going to read in the NetCDF data set that we've got on our um, in that directory. Take the first field automatically from it and let's just see what we've got by inspecting. So this time we've got precipitation field. In this case, it's giving us a long name precipitation here. That's that's implying that there isn't a standard name assigned. Um, and you probably should assign one because the standard name is obviously more standardized as per as per the, the, the title of it. But um, you can also give them a long name, which is more an informal. It's not CF compliant. Um, let's read in another one. Um, so the key thing about this one is um, it gives it gives quite similar data um, in terms of what it represents, but actually this is on a um, this is in lower resolution. So you can tell this from looking if we look at the latitude, it's got 145 um, data points there, longitude 53. In this case, there's roughly half that. So this has like 73, 27. So imagine this is on kind of a grid that's um, roughly um, um, well, there's half as many, roughly half as many data points um, um, for these coordinates. Um, so say if you think of it as a grid, um, it's more coarse. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to take the data from this field um, and we're going to apply it to uh, the domain or the, um, the grid that is uh, defined on this data. Um, to, to regrid it. Um, I mean, regridding it, you can define your own grid, um, say, but also, um, as example, it's, it's sometimes easier, in it, as in this case, we're actually going to take a grid that exists on another field and apply it to that grid. So there's two regridding methods in CF Python. Um, there's regrid S and there's regrid C. So regrid S is spherical regridding, regrid C is um, Cartesian regridding. So it depends on the, the coordinate system, basically. Um, so in this case, uh, regrid, regrid S is appropriate because we've just got kind of latitude long, uh, a latitude longitude grid, quite standard. Um, so the method, yes, regrid S, and you apply it in the sense um, um, that F is the field with the data that you want to regrid. G is the field with the grid that you want to regrid that data onto. So essentially, the, the argument to regrid S is the grid you want to take. Um, Method is this the, the, the keyword argument we're providing here it tells us what interpolation method we want to use for the regridding. Um, um, I don't really have time to cover cover those here because I'm running out of time. But um, in our documentation, we specify that there's different ones. Um, um, so, for example, conservative I think uh, conserves um, the area integral. Or well, don't, don't take my word on that, but that's off the top of my head. I think I seem to remember that. Um, so yes, let's do two regrids. Uh, spherical regrid um, operations, but using different methods just so we can compare what they're, what they're like. We're also going to use this equals method, which is a um, a method in CF Python that um, allows you to compare field constructs in an informative way. Um, excellent. So that's actually told us after we've done the regridding, are these two equal? No. Actually, you can add a boss at your argument to get a bit more detail I think yeah so that's giving us a little bit um, yeah so it's telling us the date is different that's all um, because they've been regridded onto the same grid just with different methods therefore because of the method difference for interpolation they're gonna have different data so the metadata is all the same and I'll show that um, well I can show that actually, I don't have much time but you can inspect the metadata and see that it's all the same um, yes, yeah, so let's inspect those here. Um, so I've actually I've got in this code. We're going to take some subspaces just to allow us to plot a subspace, which is easier to compare. Um, so we can actually yeah get an, a plot as a, a cross section of the data and then see um, how they differ. Um, oh, here's here is some example of customizing the CF um, plot. So this is um, the CF plot documentation. I'll tell you. Um, details, but in this case, we're changing the color scale to something a bit different. Just why not? Um, 
so let's comment it out and just remove that. Um, and we're also doing subplots. So before we've just been doing a single plot by default, but in this customization, you can set rows, columns, you know, create as many subplots as you like, customize those separately, provide a title, for example, all the various things you might be familiar with with a, with a visualization tool. And, and as I said before, it's a matplotlib under the hood that CFplot um, builds on. So you can do all the various kind of things you might want to do with matplotlib, if not directly in CFplot um, via the exposed object, uh, matplotlib object object. So let's see. Uh, oh, so I should say before I run this, um, we're actually going to compare as well. We're going to take the data from, um, which I'll scroll up so you can see what we had. Yes, from the um, field that was regridded by the patch method and just subtract um yeah subtract that from the field that was regridded by the conservative method remember all that's different is the data here so we want to just see what the difference in the data just to explore what um as you know this is this mini exercise the difference in um those methods producers um in the final field okay so let's run that Might be a little slow on, I think it's to do with the virtual machine, possibly, but um, it should, it should run. And the, yeah, oh, the grids are slightly out. I don't know if I've somehow messed with this, um, messed with the logic to mess it up. I'm not sure why that's in its own little box, but ignore that. If you ignore the, the other box around the other two, maybe it's because I've not. I've closed CF plot um, from that G close too early. But um, so basically, what we're seeing on the, um, the left, well, yeah, the title should tell us um, as I put them in to be deliberately to indicate what, what we're seeing. So this is the precipitation field before regridding. So that's our original field. Um, you see precipitation in millimeters there. Um, on the right is the field after regridding. So Hopefully you can just about see, um, let's see, I realize this, the screen might be fairly small, but you can see um, previously um, the kind of resolution was more fine grained and it's now become more coarse because we've taken that data and we've put it on a different grid and the grid was, was more coarse. So that's done what we expect. And you can see that it kind of represents the original data, but it's, it's, it's coarser. Um, and this was our subtraction of the two um, Methods. So you can see that they have produced different results because this is not, you know, subtracting them isn't all zero. This is indicating, um, is there a color bar somewhere? Yeah, at the bottom. The slight variations, nothing remotely comparable to the, um, you see here, this is in like order of magnitudes of hundreds, whereas this variation between the two methods is fairly small relatively, but um, the two methods produce different results. But mainly I did that as, a, as an example of how you can regrid with different methods and to show um, um, just some more plotting um, examples. Uh, okay, so Caroline's asked a question, uh, with the regridding, do you need to tell tell it what to do with missing values or just does it just deal with them automatically? Um, I, think it de I think it deals with them automatically. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe I can try that out um, on some data I have and get back to you. Um, I think generally CF tries to um, do what it thinks is sensible. Um, so if you mean miss, uh, I guess, what do you mean by missing? Do you mean say, um, um, like NAN or um, the mast values or like the ocean? Yes. So, so essentially, yes, it's obviously it's only plotting the data that it has. Um, so it should, yeah, it shouldn't be an issue if it's, um, you know, well, this white space here means there's no data for this. Um, yeah, so I think, I think that's, um, if you do just mean the kind of, in that sense, I think it's, uh, yeah, it should handle it. Sorry if I, I've not, um, I, I was maybe thinking on a more fundamental level, because you can do things like masking of data. You can have um, data, which is you know, obviously with NumPy, you have things like infinite data and NANs and, and more complicated things like that. But yeah, I think it, I think it handles um, most of the things that you would normally throw. You know, normally have in a, in a field construct. Um, 
I've got another example of regridding across Cartesian coordinate systems. So regrid C, that method. Um, but I um, think just in the interest of time, I think I'm running out of probably almost over time, actually. Let me just. Julian or Jack, if you're there, do you know do you know how much time I've got left? I'm seeing, I think I might have just be at the end of time. I think you're four minutes past your uh, the expected time, so it's already uh, seventeen zero four right now. Sure. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, cause just looking at my clock, I was thinking that might be the case. I wanted to check. Okay, so let me just um, I'll skip regridding and I'll well the, the second part of regridding because um, I want to wrap up. I don't want to go over time because I did that last time <laughs> quite badly. Um, I'll quickly show you um, in, in like a minute that you can look at the groups as well on, I'll say, a NetCDF4 file. So this is just showing us that this data one file is NetCDF4. We're reading it in like we did um, into a field construct um, using CF Python, as we've done previously in these exercises. And you can see roughly from inspection what it is. So there's methods to look at various aspects of NetCDF. In this case, we're looking at variable, variable groups. So there is, there is none. Oh, actually, this well, uh, specifically with with an empty um, object, this means there's no um, groups other than the root group. There's always one group, and that is the root group. So that's basically all there is there. But in here, you can um, we're doing applying some um, methods to say um, set a property on um, variable, set a group attribute, and actually create some groups. So let me just quickly run that. Um, and that'll create those groups. Uh, I'm going to inspect in a second. Um, yes, yeah, so let's just see what that did. I see some people have to leave. That's absolutely fine. Actually, I'm, I'm only going to be two more minutes, literally. Um, but if people have to go, then um, then absolutely, that's fine. Just um, just so I can quickly demonstrate this. Um, yeah, so let's compare the two. Let's compare the one before we set the groups and after. See, they're not equal. The equals is returning false. They're not equal. Um, and that's because they, they they look the same apart from, um, if you look carefully, um, in fact, no, it doesn't show in this inspection. You have to just check on, on the groups, the underlying groups. So this time we're getting our groups that we specified. If you remember before, we got nothing for that, implying it's just the root group. And now there's some new groups. Um, and yeah, there's a little bit more in this, only a little bit more in this notebook about kind of uh, manipulating um, groups in other ways, looking at them, adding attributes for them. Um, but yeah, I'll 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 not go too far over time. So basically, that's that's uh, a kind of a few mini exercises that hopefully show you um, the capability of CF and CFDM um, and CF plot. Um, and I've linked the documentation because that's the best place to look for, I guess, specific questions. Um,